Welcome back to Get Connected. I'm your host, Con Jackson. Living out your dreams, living out a great life. What lessons can we learn from those that went before us? Well, our next guest has written a book, 30 Lessons to Living Better, and he joins us right now. Doctor, welcome to Get Connected. Hi, Con. Well, Dr. Pilmer, we're coming to you from Prague, and I want to know, what is it that led you to write this really fascinating book on living better, 30 ways to live it? You know, uh, I'd say a few years ago, I had this idea. Could we go to the oldest Americans, the ones folks have called our greatest generation, and ask them not for their life stories, but for their practical advice for how younger people could live happier, healthier, and more successful lives? Felt it was critical to do that now because we aren't going to have them with us for more than maybe five or ten more years. And I wasn't disappointed. I think they really came up with some great lessons for living. Well, Doctor, and congratulations on finishing the book. I just want to know, did it influence you enough to change any of your behaviors going forward? You know, I'd say one of the biggest changes for me, as somebody who worries about aging a lot, I found I'm much more comfortable with it because they really tell you, aging in old age is way better than you think it's going to be. Don't worry about anti-aging projects and that sort of stuff, but kind of embrace it as you get older. And as somebody in my late 50s, I found that to be a very comforting and helpful message. Well, doctor, I know the book has 30 lessons. I was hoping you could summarize maybe three of them that would entice us to go out and read about the other 27. Sure, uh, let me give you three that I think are really important. Uh, the first one's a big one. Uh, if, if America's elders want young people to know anything, it's that when you get to the end of life, you're going to say like they do, life is really, really short. And they say that not to depress you, but to get you to make better choices and be more selective, to say yes to opportunities and, and that sort of thing. So I'd say that's one. Uh, as we're approaching Valentine's Day, um, their key advice for choosing a mate for folks who are in that market, find someone very similar to you in background, interests, and values. You know, they say opposites may attract, but don't make for good long relationships. And I think in the last one I would say is if you're raising kids, uh, there's a magic bullet um, for good relationships, and that's spending time with them in routine daily activities. So I'd say those are three that I've really thought about quite a bit. Well, you've certainly done a great job enticing us to read more. Now, when it comes to regrets, what universally across the board when you interviewed folks seemed to come up? You know, this one really surprised me. I thought it would be an affair or a failed business deal. Uh, one of the biggest things uh, that older people really regret is having worried too much, spending too much, wasting time, poisoning your life, simply worrying about things over and over. Uh, and in the book, I think they offer some good tips for how to reduce worry in your life. Uh, but that was a surprising regret and one that almost everyone said. Doctor, I know you referenced in the book, as I've seen it, emotional intelligence. Why is that so important to you and what does it mean? You know, even the people in jobs that were the most technical, you know, my scientists and my engineers, everybody said that emotional intelligence trumps any other skill on the job. Namely, you've got to have those soft interpersonal skills or your career is just not going to travel as far as it should. And that really was a key message. You have to learn how to treat people well, if I could use scientific language, how not to be a jerk on the job is what they view as the most important for career advancement. And you know, they've worked for 50 or 60,000 years, so I take it seriously. There was one lesson in there in particular that surprised me, that people encouraged others to marry someone like them and to try not to change them. Did that surprise you? You know, there's one thing which this generation believes, and that's that the institution of marriage is itself important. It's not just a couple feeling happy all the time, but it's buying into this really long-term commitment. And many people went through terrible patches in their marriage. And at 70, 80, and 90, they would say, I'm glad that now we had these extra 20 or 30 years. Of course, no one should stay in an abusive relationship, but they say if the going get tough, if, you know, they, they suggest people hang in a bit longer. Well, one encouraging thing is to hear from those lovebirds that have stuck with it through time. Any last words, doctor, before we leave as it comes to your brand new book, 30 Lessons for Living? Yeah, you know, I think in general, these folks have an incredible amount to offer. I'll say it this way. Who are the credible experts on living through hard times like we're in right now? It's people who lived through them 40 and 50 and 60 years ago. So I think that we can really use their wisdom to help lead happier, healthier, and more successful lives.
Well, Doctor, given your tremendous success and talking to a lot of successful people and doing this book, what advice would you give to anyone out there living out their dreams? You know, they say again and again and again, it's really simple. Go for it. Take a risk. As one 87-year-old said, you've got to pack as much into it as you possibly can. Their view is not to put yourself in a box, you know, to extend yourself and take chances. And you wouldn't expect that, right, from the oldest generation, but that's really what they encourage you to do, is to take more chances in life. Well, Doctor, great advice. Thanks so much for putting this book together, 30 Lessons for Living Better. Thanks so much. Well, and thanks so much for having me with you today. Certainly great having the doctor with us. The book is out. We can all learn something from that book. The wisdom from the generation above us. That's awesome. Now, when we come back, we're in Prague. We're going to check things out. Let's live. Let's travel together here in Prague when we come back. Thank you so much for watching. Are you tired of negative news? We are. And that's why we're creating a movement by keeping it real. With what you need to know. It's more than what's happening. It's bringing hope back to our lives. So go to contv.com and join our movement.